If you want to fail, be disorganized, right? Let your calendar be unorganized, let your office or your workspace be a wreck. Don't have any of your projects mapped out. Don't plan out your meals. Don't plan out your spending or your exercise or your self-care. Just, just let the chips fall where they may. That way, maybe you'll achieve your goals by accident. Maybe you'll be happy by accident. Hey, my friends, this is Tom Cotter, and you're listening to The Impactivist Show. This is a podcast that connects you with ideas, habits, and leaders who are making an impact in their community and across the globe. In this podcast, you'll be inspired by their stories and their struggles. You'll learn tips and strategies to enhance your own personal growth, your life, and become the very best version of yourself that you can be. And you'll walk away with a renewed sense of empowerment and motivation to make an impact in your world right where you are. So welcome to The Impact of a Show, where inspiration and ideas collide. Thanks for being here. Uh, hey, podcast, what's good? It's Tom. Listen, I uh, had a really interesting time uh, a few weeks ago, and I wanted to pass this along to you. I hope it helps. Uh, t- twice a year, usually in December and in July, I sit down and I do some, I, I carve out some time, put it on my calendar at the beginning of the year to reevaluate everything I'm involved in. I sit down and I look at um, all the organizations I'm a part of, all the, the places where I serve, the, uh, wherever I'm working or, or whatever that business or ministries look like, like where, where I'm giving money, uh, the, the thing I'm, things I'm doing for health. Uh, for all of those kinds of things, music and writing, like everything that I, I'm a part of, I reevaluate every six months. And the purpose is to make sure that we stay on track, to make, make, make sure that we stay focused where we need to focus, make sure that we uh, are pruning things that are growing out of control. Sometimes, you know, if you work out in the, in the garden, out in the yard, you, the, before you reach for the stars, you need to reach for the shears. You need to prune, right, so that you're growing in the right direction. Otherwise, things kind of get out of control. And if you watch the last episode or listen to the last episode, um, then you, it, we talked about how, you know, sometimes life can be a junk drawer. And so this kind of dovetails with that. So what I did this year is I decided to do it differently. I decided to uh, create a list. And my list this year was how can I ensure that I would fail, right? Like we're going to talk about how to fail because I figured if I could define five or six of those things, of this, these are the ways I need, these, things, these are the things I need to do then uh, in order to fail, then those are easily identifiable. Um, so... Here we're going to talk about how to fail, and uh, I hope this is helpful. So number one, and these are all from personal experience, but number one is spread yourself too thin. Like if you want to ensure failure, if you want to ensure that you are going to fail at whatever you're trying to do, then just spread yourself too thin, right? Say say yes to every opportunity that comes along, uh, every door that opens, participate in every event, every group, every project you're ever invited to. Basically. just operate out of a scarcity mindset, right? That I have to do everything or I'll fail. Like I have to do all of this stuff or everything will be a disaster. Actually, the opposite of true, opposite of that is true. If you want to fail, um, but say yes to everything and do a million things, right? Don't give your best to any of them. You can spread yourself too thin. For here's an example, personal example um, from my life. I play music. Most of y'all know that I have a band. Sometimes it's just solo. It's a two-piece, a three-piece, or it's a five-piece. I mean, it can be all kinds of things, but I love music, right? It's a part of who I am, but I can't say yes to every gig. Some don't pay well or don't pay at all. Uh, Some don't fit my schedule or my band member's schedule. Uh, In the beginning, I I would play like anywhere, everywhere. Like I would drive three hours. I I drove, I don't know, four and a half, five hours one time. Um to East Texas to play a coffee shop that didn't pay anything. And that's what you do in the beginning, right? Sometimes you, you go any, anywhere you want to go, you go anywhere you get invited at a play for tips, right? Um, also, I have a book that I've written, uh, and I'd love to write more. I've got a, lot, a, a few ideas, several ideas that would be fun to pursue, and I think they would be helpful to other people. So that's something that I could do. Um, I'm also a member of several uh, professional like network groups, right? Businesses and health and nutrition and biohacking and all this kind of thing. One of those groups has meetups three to six times uh, a, a month, 
Um, they meet several times a week, some of them. They have Zooms every month. They have in-person uh, mixers and after-hours things uh, every few weeks. And if I said yes to all of them, I would spend nearly 50 hours each month just doing that. That didn't count driving, that didn't count pr uh, preparation. Just 50 hours a month sitting in front of a screen or standing and talking to people, um, which is great, but I just can't say yes to all of those. So I have to give a certain number of hours each month to those things, but not any more than that. I also get invited to speak to various groups about our charity um, or about the podcast or coaching, which I love all of that. And I love being with people and love learning how to serve them and help them connect with their passion and their purpose. So there's that. There, there are also business opportunities like all around us, right? Building three businesses. I'm constantly looking for ways that we can impact people's lives. But the choices of where to put my time and my money are endless. And there's millions of things I could do and get spread too thin. Oh, and also I have a family, right? Like most of you, I, I, um, I have a wife of almost 30 years. We have three kids. We've got two dogs. Our family is number one priority. They all have activities. And they all have schedules and plans and projects, and I want to be involved in all of those things. And y'all, I'm just, I get tired of just making that list. Like, I, that didn't even include things about what I do for my own health or self-care or creative energies or morning routines, friends that I regularly hang out with and grab coffee or lunch. You can see how easily it is, how easy it is to be spread too thin. And probably you're that way too. If you're a high performer, if you're an achiever, if you have goals, if you have a family, um, you're involved in church or work things, it's easy to get spread too thin. And a great way to fail in our goals is to do just that, to do a million things at 5% or 10% and do nothing at 100%. Right? They would all suck. That's a great way to fail. Number two is this. I have a lack of outside support. Just if you want to be sure that you failed, then just like go do it all yourself, right? Be a lone wolf. Buy into the lie that it's lonely at the top. Personally, I don't think anyone has ever made it to the top alone, like nobody. But if you really want to fail, just go do it all by yourself. Don't get any outside support. Number three, be ungrateful. This is huge. If you want to fail, don't waste your time being ungrateful. I mean, don't waste your time being grateful. Sorry. Don't take time to stop and celebrate any victories along the way. Right? Don't waste time counting your blessings and feeling super thankful or appreciative of what you have, of your friendships or your relationships or your talents. Just be ungrateful. It's a great way to fail because you'll be so preoccupied with what you don't have. You'll, you're going to miss a ton of important things along the way, along that journey. and You'll be miserable and bitter and angry and grouchy. And you'll be alone because nobody's going to be want to, want to be around you anyway. So just it works out. So number three way to fail is be ungrateful. Number four, be uncreative. Again, this is another huge one. I wrote a book on creativity. So if you want to fail, just keep doing the, the same things the same way you've always done them. Right? Don't change. Don't improve. Don't innovate. Don't be curious. Just assume you have all the answers and that your way is the way. I know times change business climate changes, technology changes, but you just go ahead and be a dinosaur, right? Go ahead and, and we'll inscribe those seven words on your tombstone that, you know, we've never done it that way before. Just don't try anything new or learn anything new. Don't be creative. Great way to fail. Hey y'all, it's Tom. Listen, I'm jumping in here real quick to tell you that one of the things I'm super passionate about is feeding hungry children who don't have enough to eat this weekend. It's such a big deal. My wife and I started a nonprofit charity called Backpack Friends, where we're feeding thousands of children who otherwise would be going without food while they're not at school. And it's right here in the US. We're working hard to make an impact in the lives and communities of those who need it most. And I would love for you to join us in that project. Just go to backpackfriends.com and for as little as $10 a month, you can be a hero to a hungry child. See, leadership isn't about being in charge. It's about caring for those in your charge. Go to backpackfriends.com to find out how you can be a hero to a child. Or just text the number 10 to 512-856-6580 to get started. But now, let's get back to the show. Number five, this is a good one. If you want to fail, be disorganized, right? Let your calendar be unorganized, let your office or your workspace be a wreck. Don't have any of your projects mapped out. Don't plan out your meals. Don't plan out your spending or your exercise or your self-care. Just, just let the chips fall where they may. 
That way, maybe you'll achieve your goals by accident. Maybe you'll be happy by accident. Number six, the last one is this. Just have no vision. Like there's a saying that where there's no vision, people perish. In other words, people die because of a lack of vision. So when there's a lack of vision, things do what? They run wild. There's, there's no growth. There's no progress. It's just everything runs in a thousand different directions with no rhyme or reason, which means things will decay and they'll die. And if you've ever, ever been a part of a group or an organization or a business with no vision, no vision, uh, gosh, then you know how miserable it is. It's a great way to fail. Just drift along with no purpose, no clarity of what you want to become in the future. You know, the word retire literally means to draw back. You know, I'm a word nerd. And so that makes a lot of sense to me. So instead of having vision, you should draw back. You should just retire in a, the, that literal sense of the word. Just do that now. Don't have any vision. So let's recap. If you want to fail, there's six things you can do, right? You can spread, spread yourself too thin. You can uh, not have any outside support. You can be ungrateful. You can be uncreative. You can be disorganized, and you can have no vision. There you go. If you want to fail, do those six things. But use these six things as guardrails because you probably don't want to fail. But if you use them as signposts, right, as posters, as guardrails on the side of the road, they'll keep you out of the ditches, just don't quit. Rest, but don't quit. I'll see you soon. Hey, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this segment. If you did, will you do me a favor? Could you hit the subscribe button? Could you share this episode with someone who would be encouraged to hear it? Maybe they just need a little boost right now, and you could encourage them. Let them know you're thinking about them and that you thought they might enjoy it. The whole idea behind the impact of his show is to spread as much encouragement and empowerment as possible. I mean, let's face it, there's so much negativity and criticism in the world right now. Who couldn't use a little lift? So please, it would mean a lot if you could share and subscribe. Together, we can make a huge impact in the world. Hey, and don't forget to hop over to the Impactivist Facebook group. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great day, man. I'll see you soon. Oh my gosh, that was good.